What's going on, guys? Mag Dowen here. Back after a little break from both making videos and doing Twitch streams. I wanted to play some Elden Ring. Relax a little bit. Make sure I don't burn out. But I wanted to run one quick map and just talk about a few things that I thought were pretty cool about what's been revealed in the spoiler season so far in the live stream event that just took place this afternoon. So I think the changes that they're making to the Atlas tree are going to be really positive. I think it has the potential to even surpass this current league in the state of the game in terms of how much fun can be had uh, as a solo mapper, particularly the nodes that allow you to modify the amount of health and damage that mobs do just across the board in your maps, I think is a brilliant change. I think it's great that they are leaning further and further into just allowing us to do the thing that we want to do with the mapping experience. If I want to want, if I want to do one map, I can do one map. They added some additional uh, ways to accomplish that. Um, there's that twist of fate node that uh, sort of like is a recycling mechanic, as it were. There's just a lot of really cool shit that they're putting on there, and that continues to be a thing that excites me and. Uh, I ended up respecting that tree so many times throughout the league. It really was just a, it was just the best part, I think, of the, of the experience. Just being able to really customize and set up the way that I wanted the game to behave. And then being able to watch as my character grew into, you know, being able to add more and more and more juice as the league went on. It, it really worked out well and I think that this has the potential to make that even better. So very exciting. Uh, however, there is a sort of big caveat in, you know, in the sense that the arch nemesis mods are being made core and replacing the old pool of, of some mods like nemesis and bloodlines. If my understanding is correct, they're going to be much different than they were uh, at least a lot of the pittier parts of those mechanics have been reduced or nerfed, whatever. At least that seemed to be the impression that I got from what Chris Wilson was saying on the live stream. Hey. But this does have the potential to change the way that the game feels at a fundamental level. Uh, because you can, it doesn't matter how much you juice or whatever, at the end of the day, you're always gonna be dealing with, with the base sets of mods that rares and magic monsters can have you, you can't really get away from that so if it doesn't feel good then the whole game for me doesn't feel good at that point there's not going to be any sort of like escape from it so there is the potential for failure here i think in a way that a regular round of buffs and nerfs can't ever the, the worst that happens when they nerf the shit out of our skills and stuff is that builds we like don't work anymore or uh, the meta changes and becomes uh, sort of stagnant but if you happen to like the build that becomes you know the the big archetype in a period like that then the game can still be great if you hate the way the game feels because every map has tons and tons of mod you know mobs in it that have a set of mods that are really shitty and make the game feel crappy to play that's not something you're going to be able to solve by making another build so I think there's there's certainly cause for, you know, uh, a, a little bit of a raised eyebrow. But we'll see. Hopefully they can just pull it off and it just feels really good. And then I think the the last thing that really interested me, we'll go ahead and uh, throw one more map in, I guess. The last thing that really interested me a lot about what's been revealed, obviously there's a Mage Blood dip card. So that's cool because it'll... I assume it would uh, slightly reduce the, the price of that item, which means it'll be easier for me to grind one out. Um, but I was actually pretty impressed with the way that they're setting up the supporter packs this time around. I'd be interested, in, uh, boop, boop. I'd be interested to know what you guys think about all of that, because I'm to the point I've been playing so long, I have plenty of armor and portals and ads and whatever else i don't really care about that shit anymore and so it was getting to the point where they really had to come up with something extravagant for me to be like yeah i have to have that armor set in those and so 
I think it's kind of cool that they are leaning in the direction of like that, you know, level up thing. I'm, I'm going to see that at least 99 times uh, this next week. So, I mean, I'm going to get some use out of that if I buy it. And a lot of, you know, like the cloak with the, that shows your resists. Uh, that's kind of cool. I mean, it's a little bit, that's a little bit uh, sorted in the gray area of like, I assume it's going to show if like your resistance is like get modified or whatever in a map so you can make the argument that it's displaying more information than what a, a non-paying player has access to but that's not what this video is about the, the, at the baseline i think that it is positive that they are expanding the scope of what they're including in those packages and it's the first time in a really long time that I think there's any legitimate reason that people might be interested in buying, like, instead of getting one $60 pack, they might want, to, you know, both of the $30 packs. And there's a, a higher chance, I think, that it'd be worth your time to consider, you know, maybe if you already bought the $60 one at the beginning of the league, maybe it is worth it to pick up the smaller one from the other uh, line instead of going up to the $90 pack, that type of thing which wasn't something that I would have ever really done in the past. It wasn't the way I thought about it. I pretty much just picked which one I thought was cooler and decided which tier I was willing to buy uh, based on how I felt at the time. Whereas now it's kind of like, I, I might have to get uh, one, you know, one from each side dep and depending on which, um, which little effects I want. I might have to get, you know, a $30 one and a 60 instead of buying one $90 pack, etc. like I just said. So I think that's pretty cool. And I guess the last thing that I'll talk about here before I go is my plans for content in the next week. So the, the videos that do the best on the channel are the guys. And it's not even by a small margin. It's it's by a factor of like 15 or 20. So the way for the channel to grow is for me to make more content like that. And so I'm going to try and double it at least and do. I would like to have a build guide up on on the, the platform by about three to three and a half weeks into the league instead of six. And then I'm hoping to at least be able to make another character and then have a second fully fleshed out guide by mid league so that people have, you know, even if you've never heard of the build before, by the, and, the, and you came across me halfway through next league, you're going to see two complete guides that you'll still have time to play before the, the league is, you know, over. And if I can, I'll even push that you know, further. I, I do want to, I want to try and maybe not treat it more like a job, but be more efficient with the way that I approach filming content. And one thing is I, I've, I've been a little bit, I guess, anxious or, or, uh, resistant to just trying to do my video content on stream live. And I, I, I think it's because I'm worried that like, people will come in halfway through and not know what's going on and think it's weird or something or whatever. But I think it's, that's going to be something I'm just going to have to get over because I could make a lot more videos if I could accomplish the part where I film the video while I'm also streaming. It makes the most sense. It, it's a, a, a way that I see a lot of the guys in the community doing it and much bigger streamers than me, much bigger content creators than me. It seems like a way that you, you just kind of have to get used to doing that if you want to do YouTube and Twitch at the same time and also have sanity. And so that's that's what I'm going to do. I want to make more guides. I want to make more content for you guys. I want to you know continue to expand uh, the stuff that I'm doing here. And I'm also interested in trying to get into a little bit more bossing in this next week. I I typically don't uh, go for, you know, just making a build that is purely focused on single target because I don't think that's the most fun way to play the game. But all the new Uber bosses that they're introducing and whatever, I think that's enticing enough 
that I would like to maybe try this time around to do some kind of a mapper build and then some kind of a bosser build. And then by midweek, I'll have access to both of those things. And so I can kind of jump back and forth. And if I feel like bossing one day on stream, I can do that. If I want to do content where like I farm a bunch of one boss and show you guys what loot we get, it'll be easier for me to do that. Those types of things. So at this point, I'm starting to ramble. Um, those are my plans going forward. And uh, as always, uh, please hit that like and subscribe button. And I will be back very shortly with any uh, anything else that they release uh, in terms of spoilers. I'll probably cover if it's really interesting. Otherwise, I've got at least one Elden Ring video I want to make before next week starts. So I will be back with that stuff. But yeah, hit that like and subscribe thing. And I will see you in the next video. I appreciate you.